a cash budget. A cash budget is vital to the management of cash. This shows the expected inflows and outflows of cash for a particular period. They help to show cash surpluses or shortages. It is especially important to maintain a cash balance necessary to meet ongoing operations. However, holding cash comes with a cost. The opportunity cost of the profits which could have been made if the cash was either used in the company or invested elsewhere. So if you have cash surpluses, it is advisable it is invested. If it stays in the business without it being put into other use, the profit on that business becomes a cost. Cash management is therefore concerned with optimizing the amount of cash available to the company and maximizing the interest on any spare funds not required immediately by the company. So management can therefore use cash budget to plan ahead to meet those eventualities, arranging borrowing when a deficit is forecasted or buying short-term securities during times of excess cash. Let's look at the pro forma for a cash budget. So you start with the period. You start with the receipt. If you have cash sales, you put them here. If you have credit customers who are paying for previous periods, you enter it in the year that you receive them. This is cash, not profit. Then any other income that you receive, if you receive them in year one or period one, it is recorded under it, not the period that you were entitled to. Then you get your total receipt. When you come to the payment, any purchases you make by cash, you record them under the respective periods that you expended. Any credit purchase payment, you record it under the period where the money left the business, not where the liability was incurred. Any rent payment has to be recorded in the year payment was actually made. Electricity and other utilities also have to be recorded. Salaries, then you estimate the total for the payment. Then when you come to net cash, you net the payment out of the receipt. If the receipt is more, it becomes a surplus. If it is less, it becomes a deficit. So then you bring the balance. So the net cash for period one will become the balance brought forward for period two. And that's for period two become the balance brought forward for period three. That is how you do it. Then you sum it up. So the sum of the net cash and the balance brought forward will give you the balance carried forward, which will be moved into the subsequent period. Okay, so the balance carried forward for period one will move as the balance brought forward for period two. The balance carried forward for period two will move as the balance brought forward for period three. So the balance for period three will now move as the opening balance or the balance brought forward for the subsequent year's period one. So assuming this is years, then the fourth year will have the closing balance for period three as its opening balance. So this will give you the total cash that is available for the period. Let's test our understanding. So this is a forecast for Lindsay Limited for the year 2021. So we have sales for quarter one to four. We have purchases. We have salaries. We have utilities. So for sales, you have 120,000 for quarter one, 150,000 for quarter two, 200,000 for quarter three, 250,000 for quarter four. For purchases, you have 50,000 for quarter one, 100,000, 90,000, and 95,000. Salaries is 30,000, 45,000, 60,000, and 75,000. Utilities are 20,000, 15,000, 25,000, and 30,000. Additional information. Cash sales are 60% of the sales, so the rest of the 40 credits. So credit sales are paid one quarter after the sales. So it means that if the credit sales were made in first quarter, it will be paid in second quarter. Purchases are paid the quarter following the purchase, the same as the credit sales. All salaries are paid in the current month. So utilities are paid in the month incurred. The opening cash balance is $150,000. You're supposed to pay the cash budget or cash flow forecast for the year 2021. So with the solution, we start by listing the quarters. So for receipts, we start with the cash sales, 72,000 for quarter one. The sales for quarter one was 120,000. Taking 60% of it will give you that. It was 90,000 for quarter two. That is 60% of the total sales of 150,000. For quarter three will be 120,000, 60% of the 200 total sales. Quarter four will be 150,000, 60% of the 250 
thousand total sales. When we come to the credit sales, you are looking at the receipt. Now, because we don't have any information on the credit sales happening before quarter one, we assume that no payments will be made here. Now, the difference between the 120 total sales and the 72 cash sales will give us the amount for the credit sales. It's the same as taking 40% on 120,000, which will give you 48. Now, because the credit sales are paid a quarter after the transaction was made, the 48,000 was supposed to be for quarter one. A quarter after will be for quarter two. So we record it under the period it was received. And we move to quarter three. The 60,000 is the credit sales that was made in quarter two. That is the 40% of the 150,000 dollars, or the difference between the 150 and the 90, because it was also paid a quarter after the transaction. So it will be paid in quarter three. Now the 80,000 in quarter four is the credit sales for quarter three. That is the 40% of the $200,000. The 40% on the $250,000, which is $100,000, will be received in quarter one of the year 2022. So if you are preparing the cash budget for 2022, we will see 100000 under quarter one for credit sales. Total receipts will be 72000 for quarter one, 138000 for quarter two, 180000 for quarter three and 230,000 for quarter four. We move to the purchases. It was said that the purchases is also paid a quarter after it is transacted. So 50,000 purchases was made in quarter one. It will be paid in quarter two. So we less it. 100,000 purchases were made in quarter two, paid in quarter three. 90,000 purchases were made in quarter three, paid in quarter four. So the purchases made in quarter four, which is 95,000, Will be paid in quarter one of 2022 it will be captured here and here because we don't have a purchases figure for quarter four of 2020 which would have been paid in quarter one of 2021 we don't record anything here we assume there is none let's move on to salaries it was said that the salaries were paid in the month of incurring so it means that all salary were paid in their quarters so 30,000 salaries for quarter one were recorded here 45,000 was paid in quarter two 60,000 for quarter three, 75,000 for quarter four. It is planned for utilities to be paid in the month in Kate, meaning it will be paid in the quarter. So 20,000 for quarter one will be listed. 15,000 for quarter two will be recorded under quarter two's flows. 25,000 will be deducted from quarter three. 30,000 for quarter four will be less. So total payment for quarter one will be 50,000. 110,000 for quarter two. 185,000 for quarter three. 195,000 for quarter four. So the net cash flow will be 22,000 surplus. That is the 72 less the 50. For quarter two will be 28,000 surplus. 138 less 110. Quarter three will be 5,000 deficit. The 180 less the 185. Quarter four will be 35,000 surplus. When we come to the opening balance, we were told in the question that the balance brought forward was 150,000. So we record it under quarter one. So the balance carry down for quarter one will be 172,000, which is the 22,000 surplus plus the 150,000 opening surplus. That will be the opening balance for quarter two, which will give a closing balance of 200,000, which is the 28 plus the opening balance of 172,000. This 200,000 will be the opening balance for quarter three, closing balance of $195,000. So the 195,000 will be the balance brought forward or the opening balance for quarter four. When added to the net cash flow of 35000 will give a closing balance of $230,000. This is where we are going to draw down the curtains on today's discussion. So we'll come your way again by another episode. Take care and stay blessed.